All right, what's up, Rose? How's it all going? <laughs> How is it going, man? Yeah. So, uh, what's up, Shad? What's up, Rodney? Hold on a second, let me fix my mic so it doesn't like blast your eardrum. Okay, all right, we're in. We're on it. On it. Um. So, if you guys all, <laughs> yeah, dude, I. I, yeah, I was picked up by some A's, some A LMAOs. Yeah, dude, skills. That was a great stream, bro. Uh, 10 out of 10, would watch again. 8 out of 8, mate. Um, yeah, I just had some business to take care of yesterday. I had a buddy who needed a hand. Um, so yeah, that's basically where I was. I just, I like, I literally couldn't even get back to where my laptop was, where I could like log in and like tell you guys that I wasn't going to be able to make it but yeah we're back on it today we can't do a super long one today because I have like tutoring sessions basically for the rest of the night after this but on Thursday um, we can do a long session um, to make up for <laughs> yesterday <laughs> what's up Rachel um, yeah so uh, yeah man how's everybody doing how's everybody doing man you know what's crazy about that area 51 raid that everybody's gonna like run and like they can't stop all of us, that thing. It's like, that's in September. Like, they have so much time to move all of their technology. It's like, I, I, I don't know. Like, I feel like it's already up. You know what, you know what I mean? Um, yeah, I, I wish I could do two hours shot, but I, I just can't. I have, like, tutoring right after this. I actually have to cut it a little early, actually. All right, so, yeah, September 20th. So, uh... I wanted to talk to you guys about some comma usage today. Um, we could talk about that. Oh, Tenzin, you're going to go, bro? We'll do it all. I guess I'll see you on a hoverboard later. <laughs> Have you guys seen those memes where it's like, when I get back, what I look like when I get back from Area 51, and it's like a dude in a mech suit? <laughs> I should have made that the thumbnail, actually. Um, okay. Yeah, we're gonna, yeah, dude, we're going to probably do two hours on Thursday, Shad, just as like a what's up type thing. Um, yeah, so I just want to talk to you just now. I just want to go over just very briefly, brief, briefly, very briefly, um, just some like pocketbook, like you can just rely on these definitions. I think Tejas, we're going to do poetry tomorrow. Um, definitions of when to use commas and when to not use commas. All right. So the first thing that we're going to talk about when to use commas is what's considered like a, um, a good comma. Know what I mean? So let's talk about that. Um, there can, um, how should I even introduce this? Hmm. Sentence structure. So it's like, Joe swims. And that is... That's good to go. That's a sentence. Now notice that if I do this, when Joe swims, um, because Joe swims if Joe swims, or actually is if one, let's change that, eh, whatever. So these are actually not good to go, right? So uh, we actually have to fix these um, because what this is right there, oh, wrong pen. What this is right here is called a dependent marker or a dependent um, clause marker, right? What's up, Henry? So these are actually bad. These don't stand on their own. And whenever you have something that doesn't stand on its own, that's fine. Like you can talk like that. People say when Joe swims all the time, especially if you know someone named Joe. But that means we do need to connect it to a full sentence. Because think of it, when Joe swims, dot, 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 what? Like what happens when he swims? You know what I'm saying? So we need to add more information and to separate our kind of crap you know, thing here, which isn't a full sentence, from our full sentence. Bang. So now we're good. Because this here is a full sentence. We have a noun that does a verb. And if we have this phrase just attached to this sentence, and notice it's a noun that does a verb, and it's before it, we got to throw a comma in there. Because Joe swims, he's wet. Bang. We're good because this is a complete sentence. And in order to have a period and in order for it to be like a good to go thing, it has to have a complete sentence in it somewhere. Okay. So this is where the first one is not complete. 
right? And the second one is complete, we throw a comma. Another example of this would be like, okay, so here's this. Now, is this a full sentence or nah, right? Nah, on top of the fridge, oh, I misspelled it, fridge what like there's no verb here this is just one big noun right so this is actually what's considered a prepositional phrase because it's on top of the way you can think of it is the rabbit is blank the log and the rabbit is on the log that's a preposition yeah so we actually need to attach a complete sentence to this in order for it to be legit because right now i mean it's not legit there's no verb in it and to have a complete sentence you need a noun that does a verb so we're going to throw a comma on that guy and then we're going to be we're going to be like putting a complete sentence onto it um <laughs> bang cool so that's our complete sentence since we can actually just throw a comma right there we're like good to go right all right, so this is the, the first kind of structure you guys need to be aware of because they're gonna be giving you a paragraph and they're gonna be like, which one's messed up? And so you're gonna be on the lookout for, is that comma right? Uh, yeah, that because that is not complete and that's complete. So we can throw a comma in there, right? So, uh, <laughs> okay, so this is, the structure is not complete, comma, complete, bang. Cool, so that's this structure right here. And yeah, you're gonna need a comma to separate a non-complete thing from a complete thing, right? Um, <laughs> dude, I thought Skills' stream was top quality. You have to be a true connoisseur to really appreciate that type of stream. Uh, and I appreciate it. I, I think I watched it like five or six times. Um, top quality stuff, bro. So that's this first kind of structure here. Now, we could have a complete sentence like Joe Swims, right? This is like the most boring sentence in the world. But what if we want to add more information in between, right? We want... <laughs> yeah, uh, that's so funny. So we want to add like Joe, a cool dude, right? So a cool dude itself is not a complete sentence. There's no verb in it. But how do we throw that into the sentence without it messing up? Because this is already such a legit sentence. We have a noun that does a verb commas again bros we're gonna do and this is like a non-essential modifier if you guys watch this stream a lot right so this is the second type of thing you need to be on the lookout for if there's a comma before it and there's a comma after it then that means you can just kind of lift it out of the sentence joe swims is just as good as joe a cool dude swims right so that's kind of what this is called. It's like a non-essential modifier. Okay, that's the second reason why you would use a comma. Non-essential modifier. Okay, so that's the second one that they test all the time. They test this thing all the time. When Joe swims, comma, Sarah yells. They always test that dude. And then... <laughs> <laughs> and then a non-essential modifier is just when they stick a non-essential piece of information like Joe swimming does it matter if he's a cool dude or not no so this is like the second thing that you have to like be aware of with commas I think there's only four that we're going to cover today and then we can hit some math if you guys are um, interested in working on any of that just holler and we'll do it uh, the next uh, this next one is so easy I don't even want to do it but list okay one two and three okay i'm not gonna go over this <laughs> i feel like you guys know what a list is <laughs> okay so just be aware that that's a list and that's what goes down um and then what okay the last thing that they test all the time uh and to answer your question tejas this year they're gonna have nine to eleven ela grammar questions on the test right so is it similar to an appositive, uh, Rodney? I think you're referring to the previous page. Yeah, bro. That's the, but that's like the fancy name. Like you, that means that you like have really studied your grammar if you know the name of that thing. But that's good, man. Okay. And the last thing that they use to test commas all the time, nine to eleven questions, is the comma fanboy. So if you have like Joe swims complete sentence, we're good to go. Um, Chester flies. Okay. This is a complete sentence. Wait, where's my pen? Right here. That's a complete sentence. 
And so we can't actually just put a comma in between because if we put a comma in between, that's saying that one of them's busted and one of them's for real. But in this one, they're both for real. So we can't just throw a comma in there. If we throw a comma in there, that's what they call a comma splice. That's what they call a run on sentence, right? They're gonna bust you all day if you go for that. Like, and they will put a comma there, trust, trust. So if you have two complete sentences, you can't just throw a comma. All of this, absolute trash. The way you have to do it is this. Okay, you put a comma and then you put an and. That's it. And this and, it doesn't have to be an and, it just has to be a fanboy. That could be any of these. It could be for, it could be and, it could be nor, it could be but, it could be or, or it could be yet. Any of those, okay, this looks kind of like trash, but any of those could go in there, right? So if you get a comma and then a fanboy up in there, that's actually good to go. This is actually super legit now, okay? so. I'm going to give you guys some questions. What's up, Jordan? I'm going to give you guys some questions to do this. Um, but just keep in mind that this is what you're going to be testing on the most often. If you have, like, for example, five comma questions on your test, these are going to be what they're trying to hit you with. So let me give you some example questions and we'll see what's up. Uh, dude, how's everybody doing today, man? Is it like crazy outside or crazy hot or whatever? Isn't it fanboys? Yes. Dude, nice job, Tejas. That's what's up. Yeah. Good job, dude. So, bang. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you guys are not a fan of Dream, huh? Let's see. Dream practice test today, and I think I crushed the math. Oh, really? Yo, yeah, Leo, let me know when you get your score, dude. We'll, like, go into that, bro. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay, so let me give you guys some sentences you could bust down on. Um, Okay, so here are three sentences, and I want you to know if this is um, if this is uh, good, or <laughs> we'll do that. We'll do we'll do yay, or we'll do nay. Okay, <laughs> so one, two, and three, yay or nay. This is like what is it, Tammy? Not this. Uh... Yeah. So just for these three sentences, tell me yay or nay if you think they're good to go or not. That's what I want to mean. So it'd be like one yay, two yay three nay like that's how i want the answer written or whatever so go for it just tell me if these sentences are good or not i'll give you guys like a two minutes to look at this <laughs> dude whiz <laughs> whiz is bringing the heat <laughs> Okay, Tejas thinks number one is a nay. Wiz thinks number one's a nay. <laughs> well, good job, bro. Laurel's like nay on number one. Okay. Two is yay. <laughs> Henry thinks one's a yay. Okay. Vienna's got nay on number one. Tejas is nay on number two. Wiz is nay on number two. What about eh? I'll take an eh. <laughs> I'll take it. Oh, we got a nay, nay, yay coming from... <laughs> <laughs> I sound I sound so dumb saying this. Nay nay yay. Two nay. Two yay. Three yay. One nay. 
for a, a? <laughs> Tenzin, when are you going to just say B? <laughs> yeah, dude, Mayor de Blasio can't stop all of us. Okay, three on yay. Okay, yep, yep, that's it. That's what's up, Rachel. Nice, nice. Yep, same thing with Wiz, very nice. Yep, Daphne, yep. Doop, yep. Okay, yeah, you guys are absolutely, so some of you still, still need a little guidance, but for the most part, you guys are crushing it up. That's really cool to see. Okay, so let's go into this first sentence and let's break this sentence structure apart, yeah? Wow. Okay, there it is. All right, so sentence structure. When Joe sits on the sofa. Now, on the sofa is a prepositional phrase, but it, it, this is so complex. English is tough, dudes, but I'm going to try to break it down for you as best as I can. When Joe sits on the sofa. On the sofa is where this dude is sitting. So this is just all one phrase. When Joe sits on the sofa. Now, this is not actually a full sentence. We do have Joe, and we do have a noun or a verb that he's doing, but we got this when in here. And when we have a when in there, that makes it not good to go, right? So this first part is not good to go. And this is a comma fanboy. And the only time you would use a comma fanboy is when the first sentence is good to go and the second sentence is good to go. So number one, that's a nay for me. Uh, number two, I love running blind, you should try. Okay, so what is the structure? I love running blind. That's a cool, that's a good to go sentence. I love, and then this is the object, running blind. Cool. You should try. You should try. So we got a noun and it's doing a verb. So this sentence, good to go. This sentence, good to go. Can we just throw a comma in between? Well, no, bro, I just showed you. Joe swims, Chester swims. That's a comma splice. That's a run on sentence. You got to have a fanboy with your comma if both of them are good to go. And since both of them are good to go, you can't just throw a comma. That's another nay for me, bro. All right, this last sentence I think is actually kind of difficult. So yeah, I think, yep, Wiz, you got it, bro. So this one is... <laughs> All right, sorry. So this is a complete sentence here. The dog sat on the stool. I mean, let me get my beautiful green pen. And then we have a comma, and then an old wood one. Now, is this good to go? An old wood one? Well, there's no verb in it, okay? So that's wrong. But what the structure of this is, and why it's so complicated, is what we're dealing with is this non-essential modifier, but the non-essential modifier is ending the sentence. Okay, because this modifier is modifying the stool where, oh, this is my gum wrapper, lovely. <laughs> so this is not good to go. And so this is just a non-essential modifier. Instead of having a comma period, we just put a period and that's what's up. So yeah, I mean, everybody who said nay, nay, <laughs> everybody who said nay, nay, yay, pat yourself on the back. That's good stuff, man. That's good stuff. Yeah, what do you think they're going to find in Area 51? Dude, I just don't think that any secrets are still there. It's just too famous of a place. Like, I don't know. Like, wouldn't, wouldn't they just move it to an actual secret facility, like somewhere in Wisconsin or something that nobody knows about? You know what I mean? So, I don't know. That's, that's just my thought there. Um, <laughs> yeah, dude, they took me. It was, so, it was so cool, dude. They had, like, hot chocolate on the flying saucer. It was, like, it was pretty chill. It was pretty chill. That was the ELA I wanted to cover with you guys today, but I also wanted to do some math with you guys um, because I had some really good questions via email sent to me um, that I was interested in talking about. Um, the first one that I wanted to talk about is that broken question that we did the other day. Um, which <laughs> oh, dude, Laurel, yeah, Tupac is in there. That's, that's actually the only place he performs is Area 51. Um, yeah, they just have him, dude. He's, he's like really old now, but I mean... Dude, Neil, if you Naratu run, <laughs> dude, yeah, you're going to be so fast, they won't even be able to shoot you, dude. You'll be faster than the bullets. So, yeah, as long as you stick your arms out backwards and you lean forward to get that aerodynamic, dude, trust me, they're not going to be able to catch you, man. Like, if you're ever running 
run like Naratu and you'll, you'll be really quick. What's up, Phoenix? Okay, so uh, like like I said, I just kind of said, and that's all good, Phoenix. I'm trying to get it together too, bro. Uh, this stream isn't going to be like the longest stream or whatever. Um, but yeah, let me give you some more grammar questions to see if you guys can um, do good since we did that. So just give me some sec, just give me a second and let me like type it up really quick so that you guys can see. And it's not going to be in my like trash handwriting. Hold on. Uh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. So let's see here. Uh, we could do misplaced modifiers, bro. Um, um let's see. Um, but, um, let's, uh, I'm trying to make this hard for you, bros. Um, <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> smells like, who smells like a goat? <laughs> okay, we can do, oh yeah, we'll end the session with permutations and combinations just so you guys will be legit with that. Let me just write this paragraph really quick. This chat is like distracting me. Hold up. Okay. All right. This paragraph may inspire you. It may inspire you too much. Hold on, let me like label these sentences. So just brace yourself for this inspiration. All right, hold on. <laughs> Three. Uh, four. And five. Okay. So let me make the font a little bit bigger for you dudes format uh, let me bust it up onto the screen real quick uh, there we go okay all right you can see it oh my gosh it's happening um whoops text where's my size okay cool so here it is y'all tell me which sentence is busted Yeah, if you guys want to, if you guys took my class, you'd see my face. Not that I'm hurt or anything. <laughs> yeah, we can talk about how permutations work, dude. Basically, what we're going to be going over is like, does the order matter or does it not? Yep, Daphne has, that's exactly it, Daphne. So yeah, if you're still confused, just look at her comment in the chat. So which, which of these five sentences is bad? Which of them is bad? So Tenzin thinks four. So four, and that's Tenzin. And why Tenzin? Why do you think four is bad? Leo's got five. Why, Leo? 
Laurel's got four. Why Laurel? Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> skills. <laughs> yeah, skills. That video yesterday was hilarious, dude. It's just like you were like, I don't care. <laughs> Rodney's got five. Laurel has B. Laurel, you're wrong. <laughs> Yashin. <laughs> Yashin. Andrew. All right, so my question is, you guys are going for four, and some of you guys are going for five. Um, why? Three friends. Oh, yeah, yeah, we can do that question. Drop that qu Yo, Neil, drop that question in like 10 minutes, dude. <laughs> we got Geek on here, too. Oh, Ten Tenzin, yeah, you're actually correct, dude. Very nice. Okay. Yeah, Laurel. We got Venna. What's up, Venna? Okay. All right, so, yeah. Why is four wrong? The and is before the gift. Ah, I see. I see. So this is complicated stuff, dude. So we are going to break this down so you can see it. Yep. Yep. And okay. I can see what you guys are talking about on that. Okay. All right. So you guys are not going to be happy with this. Neil, I think you're wrong, dude. <laughs> I think six is wrong. Okay. So you guys obviously recognize this one really, really well. I took time to memorize my locker combination. That's a complete sentence. I knew I would forget it. That's a complete sentence. We have a comma fanboy separating it. That's legit. When I looked around at all the people, because of this when, this is not a complete sentence. I felt like I was a little lost. Yeah, that's a complete sentence. So we could put a comma in between this not complete and this complete sentence, okay? You guys probably already knew that. Uh, my teacher, Mr. Basasa, grabbed my backpack and threw it out the window. Man, what a dude. So yeah, this Mr. Basasa is the uh, non-essential modifier. You know what I'm talking about? All right, so now we're down here because this is kind of separating the, the super easy from like the super difficult. Okay, I don't know why I can't get rid of that one, but oops, my life is, my life is pain. Okay, whatever. Um, whatever, you guys know that's not 14. So let's look at this one. I lost my pencil, my eraser, and my baseball hat. Now, a lot of you guys are saying, oh, there needs to be an and in here and not an and in here. But the question with all of this is not can we write it in a different way? The question is, is there a problem? Is there a mistake, right? So right now, there's no and, but a gift from my grandmother. Now this is a specific thing, specific thing, specific thing, and then a gift from my grandmother. It could be, and this is the interpretation, that this gift from my grandmother is describing the baseball hat. That would be, quote unquote, that non- essential modifier know what i'm saying yeah yashin that's exactly it dude um yep so that gift from a grandmother now we could straight up just do this we could just say this and that's correct that's totally fine but is this wrong as written no, because this could potentially be a non-essential modifier describing that baseball hat now in las vegas nevada the home of my family Nevada, the home of my family, is the noun in this, right? We do need this comma between the city and state. That's what's up. But we also need a comma here. And that makes this surrounded by commas, which makes it a non-essential modifier. Know what I'm saying? Oh, is there a mistake in the spelling? All right. So, yeah. That's why this sentence five is actually busted because you need this comma or else that's no longer a non-essential modifier. And the sentence would read in Las Vegas, Nevada, the home of my family and Nevada, the home of my family is probably not the name of the city. Know what I'm saying? So with that comma right there, we put a comma right here. And now this is a non-essential modifier. Now we could just get rid of it. And yeah. In Las Vegas, Nevada, I spent my high school years. That's legit. So yeah, that's how this one works like that. Um, people were asking about um, misplaced modifiers, how that works. And we've talked about this. Um, come, why won't it let me erase this one? This is so sad. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, so this is what it talks about. Um,
So this is what we're talking about with the non-essential modifier. That is bad. Um, this is also bad. <laughs> okay, this is also bad, all right? So... <laughs> <laughs> okay, so look at these two sentences really quick. Working, they're both incorrect because of quote unquote non essential modifiers. And the non essential modifier has to be in the correct place. It can't be in a bad place because it modifies. Yeah, Jane, that's exactly it. Because the way that this first sentence is written, working through the night, the desk. So it kind of suggests that the desk was working through the night, right? Because the real sentence is just this, but we're gonna add a non-essential modifier. And right now, this thing is modifying the desk. So that's actually wrong. We should have... Hmm. Okay, that's what's up. <laughs> yeah. All right, yeah, you got that. <laughs> so, yeah, I think you guys saw this too. Like, this is just an example of why the placement of a non-essential modifier is super important. <laughs> because you just don't want to assume that your waiter is a juicy steak. Um, you know, some waiters may take that as a compliment. I'm not going to assume anything there. But my... I guess my assumption would be that this non-essential modifier needs to actually go on the other end of this food, just like that. And notice, when I put that non-essential modifier at the end of the sentence, I get this, this comma period thing. That's no good, bros. You just erase the comma, and that's how you end a sentence with a non-essential modifier. Okay, so that is an example of not only sentence structure that we talked about, but also those misplaced modifiers. And dude, if you can master the concepts that we just covered today, you're going to be a boss. <laughs> oh my God. Okay, that, all right. I don't know if I wanted to know that, but that's hilarious either way. Okay, cool. So that's grammar. Do you guys have any uh, questions, concerns, or compliments about that? I definitely will take all compliments. <laughs> I'm just now thinking of that juicy steak, man. You know that that meme? It's like, let me see if I can pull it up. Actually, I don't. I don't know if this meme is too old or whatever. It was like a uh, old people Facebook thing. I don't know. <laughs> All right, I'll just pull this up for a second. Hold up. Oh, whoops. This guy right here, have you guys seen this? Oh no, that's like way too big. It's like this, uh... have you guys seen this meme? This dude. <laughs> oh my God, I still can't make it big enough. That's hilarious. All right. Have you seen this? That's what I was thinking when I saw that juicy steak thing, thinking about those steaks. All right, so let's go through it and uh, let's go talk about some combination permutation stuff really quick. Okay. Oh yeah, dude, static is coming bro just wait okay so uh yeah we still got about 20 minutes before the static totally dominates the uh microphone here all right let me just clean up my obs just a second just so it won't be as laggy how y'all doing today man y'all doing good it's a good day to be alive man you live under a boulder yeah i do <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh okay all right, so let's see. <laughs> Jane, that's so funny, okay. <laughs> All right, so there are three friends, seven candies. No friend wants the same candy. How many possible ways can the friends eat the candies? Um, so my question to you, Neil, just the way that question's written is, do three friends each pick one candy or do three friends pick two candy, or I mean, two, two people pick three candies and one person gets one candy? Like, how do we, how do, we do that? Um, I do want to talk about the difference between permutations and combinations because I think that's a legit thing to talk about. Um, 
And if you don't know these words, it doesn't matter. What matters is you know the concepts behind them and you know how to like do it legit when you do it. So permutation is like this, where it's like, Okay, so then here's the door. All right, so that's what a permutation is. It's when that order matters, where it's like combination is like you know, hat triangle, you could have star triangle, you can have star square. You know what I mean? That's a triangle. It's like different combinations of the star square triangle. Now, if we have star square, does it matter if we also have square st star? I mean, these are basically the same thing, so we actually don't count it. Where it actually is super important that we count the order here. You know what I mean? Um, thanks, man. You know, what you guys don't realize is in between these streams, I spend hours practicing my art and practicing, you know, just my expression through drawing. Um, this actually was, you know, something that I've been thinking about for a long time. Uh, and when it finally came out, I, it's absolutely perfect. Exactly what I was hoping for. So let's actually do this as a problem. We got four friends and they're waiting in line. Or actually, let's even change that. Okay. And obviously the order matters on this one where this one would say we have square triangle and star how many pairs of two shapes are there all right my handwriting is really bad but i just wanted to like get done with this so this is the major major difference between these two and if you can like recognize which one they're doing it makes a world of difference. So to solve this one, right, we're going to do four times three times two times one, because the first person in line, there's four possibilities. Now, let's say we put this dude first. Now there's second place in line, three possibilities, two possibilities, one possibility. Okay, for this one, we have three shapes, right? And we know that they're going to be two pairs. So just to show you the difference, we could have square star square triangle and we could have triangle star but we don't want to put triangle square because we already have that and we don't want to redo star because we already have that and we already have that so this is okay so really how many combinations are there one two three okay so that's how this one goes down now uh, this one is a little bit more complicated, I, I guess, to explain. Um, but a lot of times if you just go through it like this, it's just like so much easier to kind of work. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. So that's what's up. That's what's up. Okay, cool. So hopefully that made some sense. Now I'm not going to go like Neil has asking about the permutation formula. And if you guys are super interested in that, I would click it into Google but like it's one of those things where it gets way more complicated before it gets simple again, because you're going to be dealing with something like uh, n minus, uh, I guess I'll use c, this times n over c minus n, something like that. I don't remember exactly what it is. And it gets very complicated. But if you can master this, then like, go for it. Yeah, that's exactly what Wiz is talking about, too. But I'm telling you, Wiz, you actually don't need to learn that formula for this test. They've, they've never historically had a permutation problem that is that hard. Let me actually show you like the hardest style of permutation problems that they actually do. And we, I, I, like, I can only stick around for like 10 more minutes too. I know it sucks, but it's just like a busy, busy day. Um, all right, so let me write this problem out. Just give me a sec.
All right. So here's a question. I'm going to give you guys like a minute to do this one. Yeah, Tejas and Chews are. That's that's exactly what's up. All right. So I'll give you guys a minute to do this one. Good luck. Yeah, didn't Rusum say he's on vacay or something? I thought he was like going to like, like a, like an island with no internet or something. If like even those exist. Benna, Jane, Laurel, Leo, Tejas, Neil, Andrew, Red, Wiz, yeah, yep, Yashin, yeah, so Wiz is actually, uh, he dumped a pretty good uh, explanation of what I'm about to do into the chat, so we're dealing with a four-digit number, oh, I gotta stop this, dealing with a four-digit number, one, two three four one two three four okay so how many potential digits can go into this first column well we have one two three four so let's just say it's the number four so those are four options the second one we have three options left let's choose the three just because that's convenient nice nice so now we only have two left that we can use because we're doing it without repeating so let's say we choose the eight and then we choose the seven, there's only one choice. We don't care about that, we're just multiplying it down here. So that's exactly what Wiz was suggesting. You're gonna get 12, you're gonna get 24. Take it to the bank, bang, cool. So, oh yeah, <laughs> that's funny. Dude, yeah, Sean che teaches is an old channel. He like stopped or something. He was like doing really good and then he's like, I don't know. Um, okay, so let me give you a, <laughs> let me give you like a very hard, yes, and to answer your question, Yashin, they're, I can't guarantee anything is going to be on there, but the combination problems are definitely fair game, for sure. Yeah. Okay. So let me go over how to do this uh, in like a, a more difficult question, and we'll see how you guys go. Okay, so this is actually a real world example. Um, and yeah, we could talk about it and whatever, but like, <laughs> yeah, where's April at? I think I got mad that I didn't stream yesterday. Okay, so check this out. Here's the legit, like real world example. Like a lot of times math is irrelevant, but this actually is for real. So let me read it for you, then I'll start the clock. A lottery ticket needs seven numbers in a row to win the jackpot. If for any Powerball number slot, you can pick numbers zero through 20. What is the possibility, AKA probability, um, that you win the jackpot on your ticket? Okay. 
Yeah, and Leo, I don't know why that video got so many views. I I, I think maybe because the clickbait thumbnail. I, I don't even know, bro. And this one's actually like a legit hard question. And I think this is going to be our last one before I have to like bust out. Tammy, is that the probability 458% or that'd be like 400,000% the probability? Or are you saying there's 458 combinations? And guys, this is why the uh, Powerball is so hard. Uh, yes, it will be a fraction. Yeah, Laurel actually has great advice. If you're super good at math, then just practice, practice, practice your math. 21 to the power of 7. Ooh, that's actually a pretty decent answer. 21 to the power of 7. Oh, I like that. What was that? Jane? Jane in the house. Okay, great question, Shad. Will there be standard deviation in ninth grade? No. And the reason why I know this for sure is that if it's too hard for the SAT, if it's too hard to get into college, then it's going to be too hard to get into high school. You know what I mean? So since they don't do standard deviation on the SAT, I can say with pretty certainty that they're not going to do standard deviation for the SHSAT, even the ninth grade SHSAT, just because that's not something you learn. I mean, actually, you know, in these advanced high schools, you will learn that. I mean, I, I know a couple of high schools actually teach standard deviation just because these specialized high schools are so hard. Okay. Laurel agrees. Yeah, I mean, if you guys get into these specialized high schools, like, yes, the numbers are, cons uh, uh, I don't know, consecutive and in a row, I think. Yashin agrees. Dude, Leo, you learned about standard deviation in sixth grade? That's going really hard in the paint, bro. Okay, so okay, I'm going to show, you, show you guys how to do this one. Because, because with, a lottery, with a lottery ticket, you need to get, seven, need to get seven numbers right in a row. Just because, just because you have one, one lottery, lottery, ticket, lottery ticket, the lottery, the lottery number has, has, has one somewhere in it. It doesn't, it doesn't work. work. you got to have, you gotta have one, one, two, one, two, three, four, four, five, five, six, six, seven. seven. That's going to be right. That's going to be right. That's static. So close, so close to finishing. finishing. So, so, so close to finishing. finishing. Uh, so close so to close finishing. finishing. The static, static is here. Is here. Oh no, oh, no. Uh, 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 I've come, come to take, take the SHSAT. <laughs> Why? Why is the static so bad? Why is my microphone so bad? I don't know. I actually know. I actually know why my microphone's so bad. It's because it's just a bad microphone. Yeah. Okay. All right. So just tell me if it's still like. <laughs> and dude, I think you guys actually clocked it because I think somewhere in the chat you're like 20 minutes. The static's gonna be coming. And yeah. Uh, Tenzin, you like the static? Why? <laughs> I mean, kind of. I mean, some people, you know, actually put on a fan. Um, no skills. I'm not okay at all. Please call 911. <laughs> Please call 911 and tell them to send a microphone technician to my house. Oh, thank God. All right, cool. Henry, it's gone. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, so let's go over this one. So what makes this one so tough and why I'm so impressed by these guys that got this answer? Yeah, dude, it might just be a YouTube thing. It might just be an OBS thing. Jane, that's a good point. Um, yeah, we can do a uh, mean absolute deviation. Um, 
It's iconic. Thanks, Tenzin. You're you're like you're breathless. Wait, you're breathtaking. <laughs> <laughs> you're breathless you're out of breath dude uh no so okay so let's go through this now we need to say how many potential numbers we could pick for this first slot here and a lot of people are going to go oh 20 but we are actually including zero so that's not just one through 20 that's 21 so we have 21 potential options here 21 potential options here 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 because they could repeat I mean, it very well could repeat. This all could be in the row. And so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven that we're going to be multiplying. So yeah, the answer to this one is 21 to the seventh. You know what I'm saying? Do you know how, like, do you know how crazy big of a number that is? Let me pull up a calculator and like do that. Uh, just so I can show you like the lottery dude is six, seven. Okay, so if this is the structure of the lottery ticket, your chances of getting a jackpot, the full prize, is one out of... one billion eight hundred and one million eighty-eight thousand five hundred and forty-one. That's your possibility of getting a jackpot. A scam, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep jane actually yeah you guys all technically technically did make a mistake because it should have been one over 21 to the seventh um so yeah i'm not gonna i'm not gonna fault you on that but yeah that's this is your possibility of winning a jackpot so it's basically not um okay so dudes i want to give you a heads up because tomorrow because I was so bad, I didn't even stream at all yesterday. Tomorrow, tomorrow, I'm going to spell this right, is going to be a super stream. <laughs> so stupid. It's going to be a super stream. Okay. What does that mean? Does that mean it's going to be one hour? No. No, it's not. Does that mean it's going to be one and a half hour? Maybe. Maybe it will be. Two hours? Maybe. I don't know, <laughs> but it will be a super stream tomorrow, okay? I just have, I, <laughs> I, I actually don't know if those comments are right, Jane. <laughs> so, sorry, I'm like thinking about three things at, at once because I have to like prep for this next session. Um, yeah, thanks for liking these videos, guys. That's super helpful for my analytics and stuff. Tell your friends and, and subscribe if you're not already. I'm really trying to get to 1K. Please help me get to 1K. That would be so sick. So yeah, tomorrow, super stream, three hours. Three hours? Maybe. Maybe. 24 hours? Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not going to commit, okay? So, <laughs> all right, so I do have to go because I only have five minutes to prep for this next session. Yeah, thanks, Shad. Like and subscribe for sure. Like, totally trying to get to 1K. Definitely leave a like and tell your friends if they're studying for the SHSAT. We're going to do 45 hours tomorrow of live streaming. So buckle up, dudes. I'll definitely set a reminder in the morning, but I got to bounce. Peace.